Welcome to the Under Center Podcast presented by St. Xavier University. Always fortunate enough to be joined by our Bears insider, Josh Schrock. Follow him at Schrock underscore and underscore all. Alex Shapiro is out living his best life. Claire is our producer running this pod. And listen, we got some categories for this year as far as like MVP, offensive player that Josh came up with. I'm going to run them down real quick. So offensive player of the year, non-QB, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year, breakout player of the year, X factor, surprise win, record, and MVP. I'll ask it real quick. Uh, what's the difference between, and I, I get it, but just so our listeners or anybody watching this on YouTube or wherever you get your your um, your podcast and make sure you subscribe too. All right, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. What's the difference between breakout player and X factor player, Josh? Yeah, I feel like breakout player, we're going to like try to pinpoint who we think is going to like, who's going to have a like a bigger year than expected. And X factor is like, who do the Bears need to have a big year? Like, so like, I don't know, for example, let's just throw it to people. Like if you think, I don't know, like Travis Gibson's going to have a massive year. Like that's probably more breakout player because they can probably get by if he's okay. Whereas like, mm. you know, they probably need someone like, I don't know. They need another receiver, another than Darnell Mooney to have a big year. Right. right. That's more X factor. Yeah. All righty. So I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. So Josh, who do you have for your offensive player of the year, not QB? All right. And we decided we're going to go. Who we picked, and then two and three. And you're right. right. And we're going, yeah, and we're, I didn't say this too. No, I, yeah. I thought perhaps we'd rank them, and yeah. we don't. I would say one to three, but even if you just have two, that's fine. Yeah. But no, we're going to rank them. Yeah, you got three. All right, we won't yeah, do record, three. but we we may give you an extra win or loss with our. Record. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, we can explain with record. We can explain like maybe they go extra here or there. Sure. Uh, so offensive player of the year, non quarterback. I went with Darnell Mooney. I think he's going to get probably 200 targets. <laughs> I think, I mean, he had a really, really good year last year. And he's, I mean, him and Justin Fields, their chemistry is unbelievable. And just the state of the wide receiver core, I mean, I just don't, I don't see a lot of other people getting targets if no one else pops. So I think Darnell Moody's going to have uh, a tremendous season. My two and three, two, I went with Cole Komet just barely. And then three, I had Dave Montgomery because I think that physical style, the one cut and go is, is going to be really, really effective in this wide zone scheme. But a lot of that's going to be dependent on the offensive line. I went with David Montgomery for my offensive MVP because I think they're going to focus on him. And even though oh, they're going to they're going to run the ball forty times a game, yeah, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> again, it's going to be by committee, but he's going to be the lead dog when yeah. healthy. I would Absolutely. believe. So I, I'm going to go with David Montgomery because why not lean on him and force force everything on Justin when you want Justin to acclimate to this new system? Yep. And that's, again, mm -hmm. going off of what you're saying, the offensive line play. But if they're decent and just give him a hole, he can get you six or seven yards. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? And it's, so a, it's a contract here. Correct. And regardless if he's going to be here or if he's auditioning for another team, you yep. need that tape out there. So go out there and get it done. Plus, listen, he's a dog. Like, yeah. epitome no, of he's... a real dog. He's a dog. He's not a quitter. Josh – my fear for him initially when he first got here his rookie year, he mm -hmm. wouldn't go down. And it was yeah. like, this is an ACL. This is something like he would never go down. And you love yeah. it. But when you know you need a player like that, you're like, dude, please, sometimes just 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 let them tap you. I yeah. get it. I mean, we even saw it in the preseason finale in Cleveland, right? He has that big run down the sideline. He could just like stepped out after yeah. 20 yards. And he yeah. just put his foot in the ground and put his shoulder into the guy. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so hey. look, I went after him. I went with Mooney. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I want to go opposite here and yours. I want to take Mooney out and go with Cole Komet just sure. to do something different, though. So, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll go Cole Komet, actually. Yeah. I'll have to go Cole Komet. But this one is my new wrinkle, my little wrinkle. <laughs> my third is Braxton Jones Jr. Oh, man. Because if they have a decent to good offense, that kid's going to have to play. Like, oh, it, it, like yeah. it's going to have to be a part of the year where maybe the first four game, the first quarter of the season, he's acclimated to be to all these phenomenal rushers and speed and power bull rushes and whatnot. Yeah. But if we're talking about the, the latter half of the year, he's formidable. That mm -hmm. changes this offense if you're getting decent lap play, if you have a, a real left tackle that you can depend on. So I'm going to go non-quarterback, everybody. Yeah. Remember that. Right. That's yeah. why Justin's not included right now. But I'm going to yeah. go Braxton Jones Jr., if the offense oh, yeah. is pretty good, that you can't. How often do you have a good offense if your left tackle is you, trash? You can't. You can't. You yeah, can't. So you can't. I went with. No, I, I like went that. with. I like that. I went with Braxton Jones Jr. So that's all right, bold. defensive, that's def <laughs> defensive. Because this like this was a, this was a good one. You you was like can't ask something. It's like dude, you did everything. There's nothing for me to add here. All yeah. right, I'll just be <laughs> just trying, stretching stuff out or whatever. Yeah, but sure. let's go with. 
Defensive Player of the Year. Do you want me to go or do you want to go? You go first. This time. Okay. So Defensive Player of the Year, mm-hmm. I went with Robert Quinn just because okay. look at what he did last year. Because he, he's I don't that think, dude. Yeah, right. I don't I, look. I would hope there will be no fall off. And again, when I'm saying no fall off, I could hope he can get to maybe 14, 13 or 14 sacks that's this not, season. That's not, not, that's not fall off. That's not fall off. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not fall off. That's a yeah. really good year for a defensive end, let alone defensive end at his age. So yeah. I went with Robert Quinn with number one and number two. And I had to go back and look at this one because I, I totally had a brain cramp. Um, I went with, I actually had, let me be honest so people can bash me um, in the comments. I actually had Kyler Gordon because of the system, right? Yeah, sure. But then I, when I was, because I was like, review your stuff. When I was reviewing, I was like, you don't have Roquan on here. And clearly Roquan's going to be a beast this year. So I have yes. Roquan as my number two because the tackles are going to be ridiculous. All right. Is if they're giving him all, every tackle that he gets, his, his tackle numbers are going to be ridiculous this year. The question yep. will be can he get an, uh, a turnovers to protect, perhaps peak the Bears' interest, which Josh and I don't necessarily believe, or peak another team's interest to give him yep. a record setting contract next season if he's not franchise tackled or not. And mm-hmm. then, and I think you'll like this one. And if, this is, I'm going system. I'm really going yeah. system. You are. Yeah. Then my, my, my third ranking of defensive player of the year. I went with Justin Jones because yeah. if he's in the backfield and he's being disruptive, I mean, mm-hmm. we know from Tommy Harris here, but we can go with, with John Randall and we can go with Warren Sapp. We know with those, if you get a crazy three technique, watch out. You know, yeah. so if Justin Jones can be, be a B plus or a B mm-hmm. in this system, you're doing some damage from the three technique and you're pressuring yeah. the hell out of that pocket just straight from a hike. Yeah. Go ahead. No, Justin, I don't. Yeah. I like that. I have. I didn't have Justin Jones. He he come up later in one of my lists. I don't have him here. Though. Okay. Uh, okay. First, I mean, I had Roquan at the top. I just think that the contract. I, I've been asked if like the contract's going to impact his play, and yeah, it's going to impact it positively. I think. I think he's just going to be. I think he's going to play like a man possessed. And I think, like you said, in this scheme, that will linebacker is so important. They're just going to let him go. Right. Just right. hey, go downhill. You hit everything. You you do what you do. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I think, I think he's going to have a massive year just because it's going to be, he's so motivated. He's going to be so motivated to get money from someone, right. whether that's a tag or you know, the bears or someone else. So I had him one a close to, I had Jalen Johnson. I think Jalen Johnson is good a one. budding, a I think he's a budding star. And I think he's really taken on a leadership role. The secondary is so young outside of him and Eddie Jackson. He's been, I mean, it's a guy that I think when, when I arrived and they had him running with the twos, there was a lot of like, oh, like does Matt Eberflus like him? And no, it was clear Matt Eberflus just said like, hey, you're our, you're one of our best players. Like you go set the standard and take everyone with you. And that's what he's done. Um, so I could see him just having a really good year where he kind of ascends from that like B, B plus corner to an A. Um, and then I had Robert Quinn at three just because the guy is, the guy's incredible. Let's be honest about it. He's going to lead that D line. And like you said, 14 sacks, that's no drop off. Um, so those are my three. Can I, I'm going to ask you a question real quick. Yeah. And this is, this could be perhaps, cause I don't think I've seen it in camp cause you would have mentioned it. Is yeah. there a chance that Jalen, mm-hmm. for instance, last year they moved Jalen Johnson a lot and I'll put it, let me put it like this under yeah. Vic Fangio. And yes. then under Chuck Pagano and then on Deshaun Desai, well, it changed mm-hmm. on Deshaun Desai. They would basically have the cornerbacks play whatever side they played on, right? It, okay. it wasn't yeah. necessarily follow the team's best receiver. They yes. actually did that last year, Sean Desai did with Jalen Johnson. So mm-hmm. that's why initially we were all kind of like, they're not moving Jalen around. Do you think with 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 um with 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 Williams, Allen Williams system mm-hmm. that he yeah. will sit there and perhaps have Justin follow the team's best receiver, or do you think they'll just play him basically straight up on on the outside and not move him depending on regardless of where the best receiver lines up? Yeah, I mean, in camp they they did not move them. They were they were very just like you know you play one side, you play the other. But I do I do wonder if how the other outside corner plays will factor into that decision in the season, right? Like if Kendall Vildor is not good, like if he just isn't good, like and teams are just going to pick on him, then they're going to have to move Jalen Johnson around, right? So I think that'll probably determine it. But early in camp they've just been straight you know boundary upside. All right, now moving on to rookie of the year, mm-hmm. I have. Jaquan Brisker, yeah. all right, as rookie <laughs> yeah. of the year. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, listen, the fear, the fear is health with this yeah. kid, right? We already, he's, we already have he's some bring, injury. Yeah, like he's bringing it, right? So <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. Brisker, and it's it's by your hair over the next player. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I have mm-hmm. I have Brisker. Then of course his draft made by Round, who went prior to him, and Kyler Gordon. 
Mm -hmm. Again, this goes back to everything we've been talking about with system. It's the nickel quarterback, perhaps, in the cover, too. So he's yeah. going to have extra chances at it, disruption in the backfield, perhaps mm -hmm. sacks and interceptions. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, I got to stick with it if oh, I no. said he's going to uh. be offensive rookie. Braxton Jones Jr. You know, okay. What I'm I thought you were gonna hit me. I thought you were gonna hit me with Tristan Ebner, and I was about oh, to leave. No. Oh no, oh <laughs> no. I was no, about no. to leave. I, I, <laughs> I bet you did. He almost <laughs> out. Let me let me give you full disclosure. Honorable he mention. Almost made a, he almost made a category. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was like, nah, I don't think it, 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 it's, it's just not gonna happen enough. Too far down the depth chart. Yeah, it's just too yeah. like and unfortunately, someone will have to get hurt. You know what right, I'm saying? Exactly. Like someone, yeah. mm -hmm. someone will have to get. And right now, prior to the season, we're not wishing, regardless of how much I like Tristan Ebner, for someone, yeah. David Montgomery, and for Khalil Herbert to go yeah. down so that he can get essentially more reps so he can make our list. He did, he did not make our list. But again, I finished with Braxton Jones Jr. because okay. again, if I could say he could be a non QB offensive player of the year, I yeah. have to add him to my rookie of the year class. Sure. But I think the defense, of course, is going to be better than the offense and opportunistic. Like these, these turn on, turnover numbers are going to look sick. As compared to mm -hmm. like 2018, they're going to be similar to I feel to 2018. I don't know if they'll get 36 or 40, you know, like turnovers, but I think they'll get to high yeah. 20s and 30, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As turnovers. So that's mm -hmm. why Brisker and Gordon go ahead of Braxton Jones. And Braxton Jones is that's a long shot again. I'm just putting sure. it out there. Yeah. But if the offense works well, you would think he would have to be a key factor in the offense where we're well, working well this season. Oh yeah, what do you no, hundred percent. Yeah, I had Brisker at one too. I don't think I don't okay. think you could go with anyone other than Jaquan Brisker if he's healthy. I mean, what we saw in what a quarter and a half of a preseason yeah, game, it was. Dude. I mean, that guy was <laughs> flying around. He's hitting everything. He's always everything. around the football. I mean, he's he's the he's exactly the type of player that Matty Ruth wants in this system. I could see him just having you know I don't know a couple fumble recoveries, a couple picks. I mean, the guy's just yep. he's as long as he's healthy, he's a missile. Um, so that's 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 an easy one. That was a layup. Now number two, no one get on me about this. No one get on about this. I went with Trenton Gill, the punter. I I can't I, get on you. I can't I, get on I you. I think with that. I, not that the offense is going to be bad. I think there's going to be some struggles. And the guy has. I mean, the, he is booming punts in the preseason, and that's a weapon, man. If you can down teams inside the fifteen yep. with this defense, that's, that's a weapon. Fits. It's going to be big. That's going to be important. He's going to see a lot of action, whether they like it or not. Um, so I really like Trenton Gill. So I went with him at two, and then three I went with Kyler Gordon. I only had him at three because sometimes rookie corners take a while to adjust to the NFL game. Not that he's not talented, but, I mean, we've seen the most talented rookie corners really struggle with the NFL speed initially. So there could be a bit of a learning curve, and there has been. You know, I mean, he was injured in training camp, and he looked he did look a step slow in the first preseason game. So I still think he's getting his legs back under him. Um, but I mean that you're right. That nickel spot is is really important. They're going to send him on blitzes. They're going to we're going to see week one, right? I mean, he's going to be asked to guard George Kittle, probably face Debo Samuel. Like we're going to learn so right. much about these Bears, this Bears team in week one, which is the cool part about playing the 49ers. Right? They could play. No offense to the Lions, but they could play the Lions, and you're like, well, I don't really know. Like, but Kittle, Debo, Elijah Mitchell. I mean, Trent Williams. You know, at left tackle, we're going to find out a lot about this Bears defense in week. And everybody that doesn't know, Josh just came here from the Bay, Area, the Bay Area, so he's following the 49ers and, of course, mm -hmm. the Raiders prior to them leaving, so he knows if anybody here in Chicago knows about that team and the players that are on that roster. I like Gil. I mean, because it goes yeah. – I think if we're trending towards this defense could be good, it's yeah. going to be important field position. So that yeah, was exactly. good, Josh. Flip like, the field, field position. Yeah. pin him back. Yeah. And, and one of the things, too, in the past, like – so let me say this, too. Getting back to – I, I hate to force this upon Matt Eberflus, but when mm -hmm. Alex first mentioned him on the pod prior to him becoming a head coach, yeah, and why it was easy to accept him was because of the likeliness to Lovey Smith as far as detail, gang tackling, you know. Yeah. And one thing we have special teams. That was one thing yeah. from that old Bears regime. They took special teams serious, you know. And yeah. mm -hmm. when you and unfortunately, Alex being in Chicago, and we don't score a lot. We know <laughs> the importance of special teams and defense, right? Because yeah, field right. position is so important when you don't have a weapon as far as the best quarterback or top 10 quarterback consistently on your team. Field position is one of the most uh, most important things you can do in the NFL. 100%. All right, so now we have breakout player of the year, and it's time mm -hmm. for you to go first, Alex. Who's yep. your – I mean, sorry, Rob, Josh. Damn, I'm dying out here. I'm just Jeez, killing man. your name. Come on. Come on. Who, do you have, who do you have, Josh, for breakout player of the year? Yeah, I went with Cole Komet. I went with Cole Komet. I think two reasons. One, I think the offensive system really lends itself to tight ends like Cole, field stretching, real legit pass catching tight ends having 
you know, big seasons. They're going to run a lot of tight end screens, a lot of leak plays. Um, so I picked him also for another reason. I think Cole's one of these guys who has so much talent and already you're hearing like, well, this is, you know, this is what he can be. This is what he can be. Where it's your three, like either you're going to be it or you're not. And now you're in a system to be it. So go like, he's so talented and the bears need him to be good because he's going to see a ton of targets because other than Mooney, there's no one for Justin Fields to throw the ball to. I don't mean to disparage Equinemia St. Brown or Dante Pettis or Bayless Jones, but <laughs> How like, dare you, sir? I'm, I'm just saying, you know, so I think he's going to get a ton of, ton of opportunities, a ton of targets. This, I mean, Luke Getzey's really going to focus on getting him open. So uh, I think he can have a big year. I mean, I already, what I say, eight podcasts ago that he could be a top seven tight end. That might have been ambitious, um, but he has that kind of talent. Um, so I'm going to stick, stick with Cole Komet. Uh, number two, I went with Tevin Jenkins. Don't you do me like that. Don't yes. you do me. You, I went with Tevin you Jenkins. My one. I went with Tevin Jenkins at right guard because, man, the guy's already earned the starting spot. They're already not going to trade him. And his physicality, his brute force, his intelligence really lends itself to this scheme. And once again, like Rokon Smith, this guy's motivated, man. He loves football. He wants to He wants to put things on tape, whether it's for the Bears or someone else that he can play multiple positions. And the Bears went from having no right guard, having you and me playing right guard, to having maybe an answer for the entire season and the future if he can be good. So I like Tevin Jenkins at two. And then three, I went with Travis Gibson. Okay. I, uh, I had him on the list. I just took him off. Yeah, I had him on yeah. my list. I, I, went, I, I went Travis slash Equinemius St. Brown. So I went with, I'll go with Travis. Um, I just think uh, he's shown a lot in, in training camp. I mean, he really gave it to Larry Borum for like two straight weeks. Um, and I think the 4-3 is much better than the 3-4 for who he is and what he wants to do. And I like that this Bears defensive staff, the entire scheme is just what do you do well and you go do that. And for Travis, it's stick your hand in the dirt and go get the quarterback. So again, we flipped. Um, you took my number one. So Tevin Jenkins, Tevin is Jenkins, my number one for breakout player because yeah. if he dominates at right guard, we're gonna be like, oh man, we got a little Cal Long going on right here or something like that. So yep. I went with Tevin Jenkins because again, if you can say, let's even just say like this, old New Orleans Saints with Drew Brees, mm -hmm. if you can go Cody, Lucas, Patrick, and Tevin Jenkins, and yeah. that that there's no pressure, and we're climbing pockets regularly. Yes, dude, that's I hate you. Want you definitely want your tackles to do what they have to do, but that takes right. a lot of the pressure even out off, off of those tackles. Correct. So I I went with uh, Tevin Jenkins. No, I went with Cole Commit with my second player yeah. because everything that you said just he he has the the physical body. He has yes. traits that you want a guy mm -hmm. that can block and a guy that can catch. He just yep. has to just get more dogged at it and focus. A lot is that with, with him last year and the prior in his rookie season seems a little bit on focus. And if he can do that, physically he can be a top seven a tight end. Yeah. We'll see. And also, I don't even feel like now with Gronk out of the league. I mean, and Gronk was down last year. Man, I may be able to go five tight ends deep if you told me to name you the top five tight ends. Because we're okay, Kelsey, Kittle, yep. and yep. you know, what I'm saying um, what yep. what Waller, Waller, um. Who else would I put on this list? I mean, I mean he's well, not that's, real, like, that's the thing. Evan Ingram. And I mean, I know he's really like, he'd be like nine. I know, no, he's not a physical, you know, he's a, a Stokely with the Colts yeah. type of, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just, I'm saying there's not as many, like this was right. two years ago. We yes. could get almost about seven. Uh, well, what about, what about, what about Kyle Pitts? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. But you know what? Even, even with physically, Cal Pitts can do it, but they have to, and we'll see with Mariota consistently use him as a yeah. weapon. You know yeah, what I'm well, saying? That's why, so, yeah. But yeah. with Cole being top seven, that's completely within the realm of possibility. Yeah. Because it's, it's pretty not thin crazy. It's not, it's not crazy at all. And my last guy for um, breakout player is Al Quddin Muhammad. Okay. Yeah. Because if he can sit there and, and this is why I took Travis off, mm -hmm. because yeah. I was like, okay. I'm going to go with Al because he's going to yeah. get more reps. And it mm -hmm. seems like he can perhaps be a more of a feature role here than he was in Indianapolis. So yeah. I feel like it, he may get more pressures than Tevin, uh, Travis Gibson. But I, Tev, Travis Gibson was on my list, but I moved him because of reps with Al and Muhammad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Going up next, X Factor, of course, it's my turn to go first. I mean, listen, that's just, it's oh, just boy. the truth. Justin here Fields is number one. Oh, for my wow. X Factor. Oh, because wow. I mean, I, I didn't even have said, I didn't even have him on the list. Yeah, because I mean, if, you're right. if, no, you're right. if he you're if right. he's if, if listen if he's playing well, yes. this changes every look. If if, if and this all our you're records right. will be off. 
You're right. If he You're plays right. well this year. All right. Yes. Like mm-hmm. if he stays at, at a B, you know what I'm saying? Maybe he hits a C plus a game or two, but if yeah. he kind of hovers around a B and it, level levels up a couple times, yeah, yeah, like get, we're, yeah. that's that's it oh, with this week's schedule, like this is a yeah. weak ass schedule. <laughs> oh, like, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's terrible. terrible. I mean, it's great compared to last year, but it's as terrible. far as I know I'm with you, but still I mean, it's good for yeah. a team that yes, is where they're at right it now. It is great for where the Bears are, yes. Correct. So uh, then I went oh, with Darnell point. Mooney um, yep. as my, my, my next X Factor because the question will be now, like last year, I, w- I almost put him in a breakout, but he broke out last year. You know Correct. what I'm saying? So yeah, it, it wouldn't be fair for me to put him in. But I put him in as far as X Factor because now with D- T- defenses bracketing, covering him consistently, mm-hmm. like they're yeah. going to have to prove, someone's going to have to prove, and also he's going to have to just beat it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If he's going to get good numbers, yes. he's going to have to find the soft spots and take advantage of it. So yes. I put Darnell Mooney as my, my second X factor, and I'll go back to my um go to the defensive well. player of the year. Third, my third guy in defensive player of the year, Justin Jones. Yep. Um, if Justin Jones is pressuring the pocket and disrupting runs in the backfield and the quarterback with the collapse in the pocket and just getting in that backfield, yeah, it's this defense gonna hum. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's gonna yeah. hum if you can do that from the three technique. So Justin Jones is my X factor because if you're getting consistent play from the three technique in a Tampa cover two, man, you you are doing the the, the damn thing. To be honest with you. Yeah. Well. Okay. So uh, I feel. Uh, I mean, I didn't put Justin Field on because mm. I'm pretty convinced he's gonna be good. Okay. So I just kind of like was like, yeah, I don't know if that's an X factor. He's just he's elite. But I think you're right. I think you're right. I think I'm wrong. I think you're right. He's obviously number one. So we'll we'll go we'll go from there. My number one was Justin Jones. I think uh, the, three, <laughs> the three technique is so important in this defense, and it's clear that Allen Williams and Matt Eberflus do not want to blitz a lot. They do not like to blitz. The Colts did not blitz a lot the last four years. And if Justin Jones can get interior pressure, that's going to make life on Robert Quinn, Alpine Muhammad, Travis Gibson, everyone so much, so much easier. And then this defense can really fly to the football and create turnovers. So I think Justin Jones, that's a huge X factor. Like you said, if, if he if he is who they wanted Larry Ogunjobi to be for them, this defense can be can be really good. It can force a ton of turnovers, right? And they yeah. need that. So uh, he's one. Number two was, can they just find a number two receiver? I don't really care who it is. Like Equinemius St. Brown, Bayless Jones, Nikhil Harry when he's healthy, they just need someone else to be productive. I think right now it's going to be ESB because Justin Fields trusts him just because he knows the system and he doesn't, he hasn't made mistakes, right? We've seen other receivers in camp run wrong routes, run, you know, they cut it off too early, they run the wrong way. Um, and ESB just doesn't do that. He knows Luke Getze, he knows the system, he knows where to be, when to be there. And he's a big friend, he's a jump ball guy, um, which they need. So um, I'm with him at two. And then three, uh, I went with Braxton Jones because, man, we don't know. We don't know how good he is, right? We did not see him go against any one of note in preseason where you can point to it and be like, "Oh, that was a pretty good rep against Miles Garrett or Jadavion Clowney or, or whoever," right? We've just seen him be okay, good against backups. Yep. So we're gonna find out a lot in Week One against Nick Bosa. We're gonna find out a lot. <laughs> Uh, I mean, how about a, yeah, welcome to the NFL, Braxton Jones. You're not Southern Utah anymore. Here's Nick Bosa. Please block him. Um, and if, like you said, I think if Braxton Jones, like by week, you know, whatever, by week eight, nine, ten, if Braxton Jones is an adequate to a good left tackle, man, Ryan Poles really nailed this draft class, right? If yep. you leave with a safety, a nickel, a left tackle, a punter, and maybe Jack Sanborn is, uh, you know, starting Sam special teams guy, that's that's really good for first, first rookie class. So I'm with Braxton Jones yeah. at three because, like we've talked about, if the left tackle is no good, uh, the offense is going to be in trouble. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, so let's move on to surprise wins. You're leading this off. I wonder – I know we at least got one of them. I think we at least got one of the same, if not yeah. both the same. And I know we're not – neither one of us are taking the 49ers victory because we've said that in the past that we think that the Bears can beat the 49ers just one because it's early in the year, but now because Trey Lance's play, it can be even more. Correct. Go ahead with your surprise, your surprise win or wins of this upcoming season. Yeah. I mean, the 49ers one, uh, I didn't put it, like you said, we've talked about it too much for it to be surprised in week one. And the NFL is always full of nonsense. I mean, bad teams beat playoff teams all the time. So that doesn't matter. Full of Appalachia state victories. That's right. That's right. Uh, So my first one, I took, 
the Eagles. Mm, okay. uh, it's a mid-December game, uh, and I think with a guy like Jalen Hurts, who I believe in, but if it's going to be cold and they're going to want to run the ball out, I think if you can force the Eagles to just run, 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 like the Bears will, the Bears can be in that game, right? The Bears can be in that game, and if they can force Jalen Hurts into a couple of mistakes, that's a winnable football game. That can, it, it can be, not that they're going to beat them. I mean, there's a chance the Eagles are 12-3 and three at that point. I look foolish, but... I'm just saying, like, there's a script where that happens, and you're like, wow, that's kind of weird. Like, how did that happen? They beat the NFC as champions. Uh, two, I put one of the Packers games. Like, it'll probably be the second one. Uh, just because, hey, look, I've been told, I've been told that every first year Bears coach beats the Packers. I've been told, I've been told that that happens. And I think, I mean, it's not going to be week two. I would not, <laughs> it's not going to be week two in Lambeau Field. It'll be at Soldier Field if it happens. Um, I'm just curious. Aaron Rodgers is good, but I'm curious how that offense looks with really no proven receiver talent. Like so much has been made about the Bears trotting out a bunch of no names. Like the <laughs> if you looked at the Packers receiving core, it doesn't look anything special. So um, that's number two. And then number three, uh, I went with not the Bills. The Bills are going to slaughter the Bears. I would never put. I would never put that on here. Uh, I went with the Dolphins just because we don't know. I don't know what the Dolphins are going to be, right? Where there's a chance come week nine, Teddy Bridgewater is starting. They've punted to it at the moon, and that's a, and that's a, and that's a bear and that's a Bears win. So I went with those three. All right, so I went with two, and I'll okay. tell you why. So I almost had the Eagles on here, and talent wise, the Eagles are one of the better teams, yeah. particularly in the NFC. Talent wise, oh, no, they're, they're top no, three they're, teams. They're, yes, oh yes, but it's what will happen with Jalen Hurts now that it's the, and it's at least the same thing with the Dolphins that you just said about Tua. The, yeah. Like these teams have primed to say, look, prove that you're the man or we have the draft capital and we know Correct. that Miami lost the draft pick because of Stephen Ross. But we still have the draft capital to go out and get a quarterback yeah. and with these good these good classes coming out this year or in the future. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, mm -hmm. I didn't want to do them because I didn't know how good those teams would be. So okay. even though, I mean, and also I'll say this, like you said, with the 12 wins, but the Eagles are paying in the NFC least. All right. Like, oh, yeah. So oh, I mean, like, they, they're going to be easy. racking yeah. up victories over exactly. there. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's kind of yeah. it's it's similar to well, no, I, I, I won't even say it's similar to us because you still have the talent that the Vikings have on offense, and none of us are Kirk Cousins guys. They their skill players mm -hmm. are ridiculous. You know what oh, I'm saying? So silly, silly, silly. Yeah, silly. So for me, yeah. I went and it, of course, so you hit it on the head. One of these Packers games is a, can be a get for the Bears, and I wanted yeah. to go. And when I was looking. I was like, wait, wait, when are they here? And I'm like, they're here later in the season. See, yeah. I think by then, you think week Aaron Rodgers, yeah, yeah, because I think Aaron Rodgers, one, his receiver room will be healthier, and mm -hmm. he'll have a better connection with those connection. wide outs yeah. later no, in good. the year. Yeah. Where I feel, I feel like the Bears' best chance to beat them is why the receiver room. And you pointed out when you first got here, like, yo, their receiver core isn't all that people is cracked up that people no. are saying or whatever. So I think it's going to be the earlier one. Okay. And th it's kind of like they always kind of play Aaron Rodgers well at the beginning of the year, but he squeaks out a victory over like the last, not last season, but the, the third seasons prior to that. He would yeah. just squeak out a victory and they'd be like, damn, we had him and we just right. couldn't hold on to him, right? Yeah, so like I'm going to go Capone. early. Yeah, but my only my only fear <laughs> would be, and we keep, we, not we're the sleeping, off, but it's, it's the it's the defense with with the Packers, yeah. Because I don't think we talk enough about what they added no, through they are, the draft they, and they through are. health. No, that defense yeah. is going to be. That's why I didn't pick week two, just because I feel like the Bears' offense is going to need time to get right. where it wants to be, and the Packers' right. defense is. It looks so good if they're healthy, man. I'll say this too: if the Bears do win that second game, mm -hmm. it will say a lot about how well that offensive line has progressed by week yes. two, because Correct. that's where that's where that's where they're really going to have to be stout. With that offensive line, what the Packers have up front, so that yeah. that's my first that's my first victory um, surprise win, and this one. Oh, so no. that's a Sunday night game, it's September eighteenth. I'm going to a Monday night game, October twenty fourth. Mac Jones versus Justin Fields. Man, the Bears will, will will beat the Patriots. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. No, the Bears I, beat. I didn't. I didn't put that as on my list because I don't think it'll be that much of a surprise. Okay. I think the Patriots, like, I, I like Mac Jones a lot. That turning the offense over to Joe Judge and Matt Patricia has been a horrible decision. They look, I mean, that game might be 13 to nine. Right. Right. <laughs> if it's windy, and I hope it's windy, right? I oh, was yeah. like, man, if it's, if it's still earlier for inclement conditions, but if it is, it's like, throw it in the wind, Mac Jones, we dare you. <laughs> so, 
I, that one was my because I, I, and it's, you're right. It's the name of Bill Belichick and the name the Patriots. Yes. And of course, you like if the Bears win that one, then the Eastern Seaboard, the ESPN is going to be loving the Bears. Oh my goodness, Justin Field and the Bears. Right. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah, Who knew? Right. right? Exactly. So right. Yeah. That one. That was that was mine. So now let's go on to record. And uh, look, so these are my records. All right, still. I, I, I really want to go eight and nine, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be scary. And I'm gonna go seven and ten. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going seven and ten. Uh, my second record is eight and nine. Okay. And then my third record is I should go, I really should go five and twelve. Yeah. But I'm gonna go six and eleven for my. But I do think the Bears are gonna get set. I think they're gonna have one more victory than they did last year because of the schedule. Schedule. Like, if they had the same schedule that they had last year. I may go four so victories. Three, three and four. Yeah. I may. You know what I'm saying. And again, yeah. I'll say this though. I could. I would give you that. Mm -hmm. Right now, prediction yeah. right now, if this was last year's, if this team was going through last year's record, but yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if this team jailed and ha ended up either tied with six victories or having another victory, because yeah. I think there's a chance with one, the coaching staff and the buy in from these players. Yeah, to, I, yeah. I do. I think they can, I think they, like, I, I feel like they'll look at their problem and try their best with the players that they have on this roster to fix it. And that yeah. was something that really didn't happen in mm -hmm. the past where, oh, we know we have this issue. Let's remedy it. You know what I'm saying? And particularly yeah. from throughout the season, but even from game to game, half to half. So again, my record mm -hmm. again for this year, primarily is seven and 10. Josh, okay. what's your records for this upcoming season? Yeah. Okay. So I went with, I went with six and 11 for my first seven and 10 for my second. Uh, and then, five and 12 for the third. The way I looked at it was they're going to win. I mean, Texans, Giants, Commanders, Falcons, Jets, Lions twice. They're going to win four of those, I think, at least. They're going to win four. Like, they're not going to win them all. Everyone's like, ah, oh, you sweep it. That never happens in the NFL. That doesn't happen. I mean, you go to New York, Thanksgiving weekend against the Jets, you know, teams lose that. It's weird. So four of those yeah. games, that's, yeah, four, win four of those. I think they're going to split with the Vikings. I like the Vikings. I'm bullish on the Vikings. I don't trust Kirk Cousins. I think the Bears could maybe get one there. You get a surprise win. And then there are a couple of hinge games, like the Patriots, the Dolphins, you know, the Commanders. Like, we just don't know what those teams are going to be. Like, there's a chance they're just, like we said, there's a chance they're just bad. And the Bears schedule is much weaker than we even think. And then all of a sudden you're at 7 to 10, 8, 9. It's like, oh, wow, that was actually a really successful season. Now the mm -hmm. question is, where do you actually want the Bears to finish for, for the future of this rebuild, right? How good do you want them to be against a really bad schedule. You know, we won the top 10 pick. And when I mean top 10, after. I mean like top seven. Yeah, All right. After, like I, the after, seven, yeah, that's yeah, seven, sure. that number seven, if they get just got that and they can sit there and look, when we first got together, we've mentioned it. I've been on unfiltered with cap. He said it. So none of us are like this. G All bears people that, that will put the GM hat on. We yep. want Justin to be the guy. We want to yes. get in this draft and we want to move back some picks. So somebody can come get a quarterback. All right. Yeah, like that's what exactly. we want. Exactly. So, and so we can be the Eagles or the Dolphins, the Dolphins. Yeah. in the future. So, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I don't – I mean, it would be cool. It would be nice, you know what I'm saying, but yeah. to really benefit this rebuild. And, again, when one of the things you just said going to – if you hit on Braxton Jones being the fifth-round pick, right? Yeah. Because we, we – let's be honest. If he doesn't get hurt, we all think Gil is that dude, right? <laughs> we all think yeah. Brisker and Kyla Gordon are pretty yeah. – and, again, everything you said about Kyla Gordon, it Kyla – both, all of them are going to get beat. It's going to be harder on Kyla Gordon being yes. a slot cornerback. All right, correct. Like, playing yes. corner in general, but the slot, they're going to try to trick the hell out of this kid yep. um, during this year, right? 100%. So we, we 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 know that or whatever. But yeah, if you man, I, oh man, I'm starting to get amped a little bit, man. I'm starting <laughs> to get. But the point that I was going to make, if uh, and I, I just slipped my mind, if we've seen that Ryan Poles and Ian Cunningham are really experts at picking out talent, you yep. know, like. And now you're giving them extra first round picks, mm -hmm. man. You real now you're building a strong foundation for the future exactly. because perhaps th these guys excel when it comes to drafting and 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 finding diamonds in the rough that we haven't had here since the, the, the basically the eighties. Yeah, and then like I mean, with Braxton Jones, it's like if if he's good, then the hundred million dollars that they have next off season, you have to imagine a lot of that's that's bookmarked for a tackle. But if he's good, you then it can go to. elsewhere. Yeah, then it can right. go elsewhere. Right. So, yeah. And yeah. then and then the thing is, too, you don't have to go and just spend the whole hundred mil. Yeah. Now you, you can, can roll, keep you can some roll, of that. You can roll it over. Exactly. So where when you do now, while you're still identifying talent 
and now you're in year two and it's like okay is this guy was this a fluke last year or is this mm-hmm. consistently yes. who he is right and if you have to at another position go and get someone who's a better player you still have the money to kind of go out and get that guy the name yes. quote unquote perhaps that the the front office would be looking for yeah no i think that's i think that's right i think Part of the like calculus or like when we talk about record, where do you want them to finish? Like what you don't want, and I'm talking about, you don't want them to go 10 and seven and have a bunch of guys who are on one year deals have random career years. And that's like, man, do we want to pay this guy? Like, oh man, now we're kind of, now he's got us. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, we've seen in other sports, like the 2013 Red Sox, right. They win the world series and it's like, oh, we got to pay, you know, Mike Napoli and Johnny Gomes and Daniel Nava. And it's like, oh wait, they actually stink. Right. Right. Now we're, now we're just there's talking. nothing worse yeah. than that paying those yeah. guys and you knew when you did it they were rental guys right, right. but you Which were like man the listen, they yeah. called lightning in the bottle and you're like mm-hmm. man we we got to go ahead and so yeah i'm totally with you that would yeah. be a, and one thing that you've said too and i i agree with you the last thing you want is for them to have a, a good record and really believe they're and think they're, think they're close think they're close yeah, yeah. exactly that's you lying to themselves that like Which, and I mean, we'll have to see so Ryan Poles is credit from so far. I mean, he's very disciplined. He's a very smart guy. I think he is very aware of where this roster is, and I don't think mm-hmm. he's one who would be tricked by a fluky record against a bad, a bad schedule. Right. I hope not. And I'm with you on that though. Last but not least, we have MVP. Josh, who do you have for your <laughs> first runner up, second runner? Well, your your winner, first runner up and second runner up for MVP. Yeah, I mean, the winner is Justin Fields. It's gotta be Justin Fields, right? And I think if he's as good as a lot of us think he can be in this in this scheme, I mean, he's going to have to play at an MVP level to make the offense work just because the parts around him are not, they're not all there, right? The offensive line has question marks, the receivers, we all know. So I think what Luke Getze has done with this scheme where he's really tailored it to what Justin does well, which is I'm a rare athlete. I want to get out and use my arm to beat teams down the field, cut the field in half, make the throws easy. I think Justin can really have a big year. So I point him with number one. I think that's a layup. And then I went with Roquan two and Jalen Johnson at three, because I do think the defense is going to be pretty good. I think there's going to be a lot of turnovers. And I think if that's true, the will linebacker and your star corner are going to be a reason why. All right. So our first two are the same. I went with yeah. Justin Fields, number one. Yeah. I mean, and then I went chalk uh, because yeah. everything every, you've, you've said it. If, if this team is decent, and if just if Justin is good, I'm not saying yeah. great. I'm not saying he doesn't make mistakes. But no, if he's no. consistently not making mistakes and remedying yes. those issues and knowing what he's doing, and yeah. man, he he's the MVP because now you you're totally taking this team to another level you didn't think on the offensive side of the ball. Plus, yes. it helps the defensive side of the ball because they don't have to be on the field all the damn time. Correct. All right. So yes. I'm I'm going Justin number one, and then of course Roquan because yeah. it's chalk it's chalk like an MFA. I mean, yeah. like I mean, if this dude everything you said, I don't see him turning down because no. of this because no. it, one it's it would be bad for him you know Correct. what i'm saying like, it, yeah, it would like be, he's, he's eliminating yeah. some teams the, the talk of him like mailing it in and playing eight that's no no it's bad for him that's bad for him he wants to get paid so he's gonna be i think he's gonna he's have gonna be out there you know, if he's, yeah. the thing is if he stays healthy man <laughs> imagine this year that he's gonna have in this system he's finally gonna be perhaps that that First pro bowler. I mean, first mm-hmm. all pro and not on the second or third teams. Yeah. Um, Robert Quinn, you know yeah. what I'm saying? If Robert yeah. Quinn balls out, let alone we've been talking a lot about Justin. If Justin Jones is getting getting in the gap, I mean, yeah. man, for He's shame. Yeah. Yeah, for shame. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, for shame about because you how you, you're going to double. Which one of those guys you're going to double? You know what right. I'm saying? Like, so yeah. like, all right. So like, I, I'm, I'm going with Robert Quinn. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, I think he is going to have a good year in this system. He does not have to really worry about coverage whatsoever. Nope. You know what I'm saying? It's just go, go get him. Go get him. You know go saying? get him. Yeah, go, go get him. So that that's definitely uh, my three MVP candidates. This was a, a great, great idea, Josh. You've been talking about it for weeks that uh, yeah. we can just go ahead and give this out. And also, Alex, uh, during one of these upcoming shows, he'll definitely give you his or maybe he'll yep. give it out. But Preferably so you'll get all three of our, our our MVPs, breakout players, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Coming up this week, we're going to mm-hmm. do a little cross talk with the 49ers. You so you coming from there, let everybody know who we're going to be talking to this up when we go. Yeah, we're talking to 49ers insider Matt Mayoko. He's the authority on the 49ers. covered him for 25 plus years, written a couple of books. He's the guy. Um, so we'll get all the information on the 49ers, Trey Lance, Jimmy Garoppolo, a shifting offensive line ahead of week one. So that'll be that'll be a nice talk with the three of us. I think we'll learn a lot about yeah. uh, 
about what we're facing, what the Bears are facing in week one. Yep. So if you want to find out what the Bears are facing, make sure you tune in this upcoming week. We'll be back Wednesday and Friday. Um, mm-hmm. Rate, follow, review, subscribe, hit us with the five star. And if you're betting, uh, go ahead and use points bet.